Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and for our tutorials, we do a lot of voice recording. And over time, we've landed on a few settings to try and make our audio sound as good as possible. So we're going to be showing you how to take your voice from sounding like we've recorded it like this, to sounding more full, rich, and more professional like this. So let's get into it. Before we start tweaking settings, we're assuming that you have a decent recording to work with in the first place. It's hard to try and make audio voiceovers sound more professional when there's problems like room echo and popping from certain enunciations. So before you record, just make sure that you do some of the following. Try and record your audio so that it's sitting at about negative 15 decibels on average. This will help to make sure that you don't clip while you're recording, and it gives you some room to play around with in editing. If you're having trouble getting rid of room echo, there might be an easy solution. Try and record inside your closet. Many people find that the clothing tends to act as a natural sound dampener. Depending on your particular situation, you might notice a really big difference. And finally, try and record your audio with your mouth between 1 and 4 inches away from the microphone. And by using a pop filter, you can avoid harsh P's and T sounds that come with proper enunciation. Now that we have a recording, let's take a listen to how it sounds raw. Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Okay, so it doesn't sound too bad to start with, but it's a little bit flat. And I want the overall sound to be a lot more full and rich. For me in particular, I also want the bass to be a lot more present. So we're going to go through a three-step process. And we're going to start by adding the first effect, Dynamics Processing. Search in your Audio Effects panel for Dynamics Processing. And now in your Effect Controls panel, you should see that the effect is present. Click on Edit to bring it up in your window here to actually start playing around with the effect. Before you actually get going with tweaking things, what can really help is to isolate the piece of audio that you're making adjustments to. To keep it on a loop, simply go to the beginning with your playhead and hit the I key. Then go to the end point of the audio and hit the O key. With your in and out point set, now go to your program monitor, click on the plus icon here in the corner, and find the looping icon, which is a triangle inside of a square. Drag and drop it onto your buttons tab here, and now when you select it, we can make our audio loop between our in and out points forever. Now let's go back to our dynamics processing effect. This effect is actually quite simple, and we don't need to spend much time with it. You might think that looking through the presets and choosing something like voiceover would be a great solution, but unfortunately, it's actually not what we're going for. Instead, I'm going to be keeping the default settings and simply taking the point here that's above 20 decibels and raising it up slightly. Then I'm going to do the same thing to a lesser degree by clicking to create a new point at around negative 60 decibels and raising that as well. I would also suggest playing your audio on loop during this process so you can hear how everything you're doing is actually manipulating your audio and whether or not it's actually changing to your liking. Everyone's voice is a little bit different, so it's possible that the settings I used throughout this tutorial might benefit from a little bit of tweaking for your voice in particular. We're done with that first effect, so let's move on to the next one. Search for multi-band compressor. Click edit to open it up, and you're simply going to select the first preset for broadcast. What you should immediately notice is that your voice should get much louder. You can combat this right off the bat by either decreasing the output gain here, or by decreasing the overall volume of your clip. Personally, I'm also wanting to make my voice sound much more deep, bassy, and authoritative. So I'm just going to increase the threshold a bit in this low to mid range here, and then only ever so slightly in this section here as well. Lastly, I'm just going to move this marker here to the left so that our boost to the mid to low sections actually include a little bit more of the deeper end. Great, we're almost there. Just one more effect to go, and it's called Parametric Equalizer. Drag and drop it onto your audio and click the Edit button to start working with it. Believe it or not, we're actually going to use a preset for this next one. Go to your Preset section and choose Vocal Enhancer. This should get you pretty close to where you need to go. But by using the frequency and gain sliders here at the bottom, you can manipulate the curves so that, for example, we can boost our bass a little bit more and have a smoother curve into our mid-range vocals. 
And with all that out of the way, let's take a listen to the before and after. Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. It's really subtle, but this can help to take your voiceovers or a narration to the next level of quality. And here's the best part. Now you can highlight all of these effects by holding Control or Command and clicking, and then right click and go to Save Preset. Name it whatever you want. And now the next time you need to boost your voiceover, the whole process is just a simple click and drag from your preset section. And guys, that's how I personally enhance my vocals for these tutorials that you're listening to. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, as always we have tons of other tutorials that you might find helpful for Premiere Pro, After Effects, filmmaking in general, and even DaVinci Resolve. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.